We have a big movie coming out next Friday, and that is going to be the George Foreman movie. Chris Davis is joining us in studio, because who doesn't love a comeback story? Boxing legend George Foreman might be on the Mount Rushmore of one of the greatest comebacks ever. And I'm not talking about the Foreman grill. George was on top of the world in 1973. He knocked out Joe Frazier to become the world heavyweight champion. Then came some adversity. Foreman became a preacher, hit rock bottom financially, but returned to the ring to become the oldest heavyweight champ at 45 years young. His life story is now coming to the big screen. Foreman is the new heavyweight champion of the world. Where's all that rage coming from? don't have any rage. And it becomes all you know. Let's thank God for the food, y'all. I bought the food, mama. George Foreman ain't no new champ. He is the new chump. We gonna get it on because we don't get along. And now the man seated next to me is Chris Davis. He's stepping into the ring to play the champ in the biopic, Big George Foreman, the miraculous story of the once and future heavyweight champion of the world. Hi, Chris. Thanks for being with us this Yeah, morning. thanks for having me, man. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Yeah. I stayed up late to watch the film. Yeah. What intrigued you most about this role and even with Foreman's comeback story? I think what intrigued me most about this, this film was that it had so many different layers to it. Uh, as an actor, when you see a script like that, you just want to sink your teeth into it. It's like a, it's like a prime steak, you know? <laughs> so many different nuances. But also the interesting thing about the script is that I didn't know so much about Mr. Foreman. Really? I had no idea the adversity that he faced. I had no idea that he became a pastor. I had no idea that he had a second comeback. All I knew the was Foreman that he was grill? the grill guy, <laughs> you know, and that he was the guy who got knocked out by Ali. So everything about this script was fresh, it was new, and it was exciting. You made him very relatable. I'm going to speak about some of the low and high moments after okay. watching the film. But I'm very curious. I know you're a big fan of Kimbo Slice, the late yeah, yeah, MMA yeah. fighter. So your skills, boxing skills, mm -hmm. before this film started and compared to now, where were they at? Oh, man, I would say from zero, <laughs> on a scale from 1 to 10, I would say uh, 0 before <laughs> 10. Uh, no, not 10. I'll, let me stop. Mayweather's 10. I would say I'm probably like a... It's a five five, okay. You know because you know it takes time to become a master fighter, you know, and it takes a lot of effort and hard work to get into the gym and to to make that sacrifice, man. And that's something I learned about Mr. Foreman doing this film and about the fight game. I was a fight fan. I am a fight fan, but I had no idea how hard these people work to get in the ring, to take that ring walk, and to do it. You know. One thing I really forgot about Foreman's story is in 1968, the highest of his career. Yeah. Early on, he wins the gold medal, yeah. but then he comes back, and some people paint him as a villain or even a sellout because we know Tom, uh, Tom Carl, uh, Johnny Smith, and Tom Carlos uh -huh. raising up the fist. So, how was it? How were you able to make him relatable in that moment? Well, I think that with Mr. Foreman's story, when I read it, a lot of people had their preconceived notions about him that he was either the sellout or he was either the brute that just wanted to pound people mean. I kept hearing the word anger when it came to him. And then in the second half of his career, they were talking about the joy and the light that he had, the kindness. But when I was watching the film on him, I kept seeing this guy with this big, bright smile, man. I kept seeing these glimmers in his eyes he, as he would reach for connection to interviewers, you know, and he would be on TV shows just smiling and having fun. And I said, wait a minute, man. That guy was always there. So then if we put that person, right, in the beginning of the film, and that person's going through all of these struggles, and I think that we can connect with that person more. So when he's raising the flag at the Olympics, it has nothing to do with his political stance as much as it has to do with the fact that he overcame so much adversity. He did it himself, not by himself, but he had to make the choice to do it. He showed up. He gloved up. A year later, he won gold at the Olympics representing America. So I just felt like it had to be more personal for Mr. Foreman than uh, anything external, like what Tommy Smith and John Carlos were representing. It felt like it was a never-ending quest to make sure he got self-respect. Yeah. So this movie's coming out next week. What is the main takeaway that you want viewers to walk away with? You know, honestly, there's so many different aspects of Mr. Foreman's story. It's hard to pinpoint one. I mean, the overall, right, is about second chances. We love right? second chances. A redemption chance. story. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's limiting the uh, the nature of the story, and I think that's limiting Mr. Foreman's experience. And we cover several different decades, so I think what I would like is for audiences to come with open hearts and open minds so that they can take whatever they receive from this film home with them 
you know, whatever speaks to them, let that ring true in you. You know, I don't want to limit that. Thank you. Really appreciate you joining us. Very quickly, though, what is one of your favorite comeback stories? Since because this is probably definitely on Mount Rushmore. One of, <laughs> one of my favorite comeback Sports stories. Sports element. Sports element comeback stories. Oh, man, you put me on the spot here. Um, well, I got to say, every, <laughs> my favorite. I even listened to the soundtrack years ago and imagined myself doing a training montage. It's got to be Rocky IV. It's not a comeback. You know, it is, uh, it is, you know, Rocky looking out for his homie. But the, the Rocky IV movie is one of my favorite sports movies of all time. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us in studio. <laughs> really appreciate it. His movie, Big George Foreman, the miraculous story of the once and future heavyweight champion of the world, is in theaters next Friday.